Um, my name is Don Corwin. I'm the president of the Sports Career RSO. Uh, we're on campus. We are working with uh, the Sports Communication Program in order to get Sports Speakers Series going. Every semester we have different speakers come in. Ira has come in for us for the last <coughs> three years, um, so that's exciting. Um, Ira is a former uh, Ferris student athlete, played football here a few years ago. Um, he then worked for Ferris for a few years, went on to the NCAA um, and worked with the football programs there, and then he started his own um, sporting console company, which he is going to talk to us tonight about leadership um, and the drug and um, testing policies and procedures um, around the collegiate level. So please welcome Ira. How's everybody doing tonight? Y'all revved up? I know, how many student athletes do we have in, in the house? Wow. Outstanding, outstanding job. I'll give, uh, when, I, when you see Perk, tell him I said thanks. And uh, I think John Cole's in the back there. Uh, thanks, John, appreciate it. This is, this is the type of turnout that we expect from St Fair State student athletes. As, as a former Fair student athlete, I love being in your shoes, being able to compete every single day at a high level, whether it be practice or the game. But I absolutely hate it coming to things like this. But I'm glad you guys, so with that being said, I'm glad you guys are here. And hopefully, if you stay with me for the next 40 minutes, I'm not gonna keep you long. Just stay engaged and stay involved in what, what we're trying to, to teach you here. You're gonna learn some things, some things that are gonna help you become not only a better student athlete, but help you become a better person and help you beyond your career at Ferris State. Because no matter what, no matter if you're in hockey, softball, whatever sport, football, whatever sport it is, there's one day that the ball is going to stop bouncing. You're not going to be able to skate anymore, and you're going to need to take what you get from here in the classroom, outside the classroom, and translate that into a career. And while you're here, every day, you don't know it, but you are doing that every day. You're building your career off the field every single day as much as you are on the field. You're building that brand. People are getting to know you, and that'll follow you wherever you want to go. When I was here at Ferris, I was fortunate to be a student athlete, to win a football championship. When, when are we going to get any football players here? We're going to win that championship next year or what? I'm waiting. I'm waiting on it. I got my ring at home. I keep looking at it. It's getting old. It's been a long time. So we need to win another one. That was a great experience. But after that, I had to go and get a, find a career and find a job. Luckily enough, as soon as I graduated, Ferris said, hey, we want you to stay here. And they hired me on. And then I went on to work here and, and, and go to the NCAA and do some, do some things there, and, and the rest is history. But you have to have that leadership in mind while you're here. I had that leadership in mind while I was a student athlete. I was involved in a lot of different areas of the campus. So what we're going to talk to you about tonight is the five things that are key to your success in leadership and in sports. Number one, how do you define leadership? Leadership is defined in many ways, but I want to wake you guys up a little bit, and I want to hear some, some answers of how you define. I want to know how you define leadership. Don't be afraid. Just raise your hand. Go. Being a role model. Someone who steps up. Keep them going. What else? What else defines leadership? Stand up. Okay. Integrity. What else? Go ahead. Being able to pull the best out of your teammates. Yes, go ahead. I saw one right here. Hard working by 
Hard working by example. Who else? A couple more. First one there, last one to leave. One more. Wisdom. All these things define leadership. There's no one single answer. You guys hit it right on the head. All these things are incorporated in leadership. And the question that I want to ask you tonight is are you embodying these things every single day? 365, not when somebody's watching all the time, when nobody's watching. Your character and your leadership is often defined when nobody's watching. So think about that as we move through tonight's exercise. First thing that comes to mind when you think about leadership to me is persistence. You have to be persistent and everything you do. There are going to be roads that are closed. You know, when roads are closed, sometimes you have to create a road. You have to create a path that's not there. It's a picture of Serena Williams there. You know, with Serena Williams, a multiple time, 13 time, 14 time singles champion, tennis champion, you know where she is from and got her start? Who knows? Detroit, no, good answer though. <laughs> I can't hear you. Compton, California. Compton, California is one of the most dangerous cities in the United States. I just saw a list, it was in the top 10 most dangerous cities. Not a lot of tennis players come out of Compton, California, right? Most tennis players are in Florida, California, nice areas. Well, she grew up playing on the hard course of Compton, California, when a lot of people told her that that wasn't a place for tennis players. But she didn't believe them. She, she saw beyond her environment or beyond what was right in front of her. So that's what I'm challenging you to do. Whatever your circumstances are, whether you're second team or third team right now on your team, be persistent. Be a person that's going to go after it no matter what the circumstances are. And when somebody tells you you can't, that's when you kick it into high gear and say, you know what, I'm going to show you. My whole life and my career was built on turning something, turning nothing into something. It was, it was built on that. I grew up, I didn't have a lot of money. I came from an impoverished, impoverished area. But I wasn't going to use those excuses to stop me. I was persistent in my goal of working in sports and I've been able to do some of the things that you wouldn't even dream of or that I didn't even dream of. Been able to cover the Super Bowl, been able to cover the World Series and be a part and cover the NBA Finals. On, on Friday, I'm going to be on ESPN Radio breaking down the NFL playoffs. Tell them why Tom Brady and the Patriots are going to march to the Super Bowl. <laughs> just just making, sure, make, making sure you guys are awake. But the point is, is that none of those avenues would have been open to me had I not been persistent, had I given up when, when doors looked like they were closed. So make sure that you're persistent. The next is creativity. Who up there knows the story of that guy right there? Who is that? Jobs. Steve Jobs. Do you know 25 years ago, Apple fired Steve Jobs? Who knew that? Some people knew. Well, they fired him because they said all of his ideas and thoughts were crazy. And so they brought in somebody who had conventional wisdom who was thinking like everyone else in the company. And he went on to create his own company. And his own company started to have success. And Apple started to do what? Go in the tank. Because they had everybody thinking the same way. And so after his company became successful, what did they do? 
brought him back and said, hey, we had, we're sorry we fired you. All those crazy ideas, go do it. We need you. So I'm, the, the, the question is, it's not about being like everybody else. The people in this world who do great things, who have the ability to take it to that next level, a lot of times when you, everybody else is going right, they're going left because they have some ideas and they're thinking about things that are different, that, that, that everyone is not thinking about. If you want to be an innovator in whatever you do in life, whether the sports you're in, be creative. Be someone that's always thinking of a better way to do it and different. There's nothing wrong with being different. There's nothing wrong with, with having a different vision. I used to love when people used to tell me, hey, I throw out an idea and they say, you know, that sounds crazy. Then I knew I was on the right track because they, that was something that they weren't really thinking about. So that creative gene is very, very important to you guys' success. And when you think about a leader, a leader has to be creative because a lot of times the, the avenue won't be paved the way you want it to go. Or if it is, is our, somebody's already doing it. The one thing that helped Steve Jobs and the reason why he was so successful was everyone else was building different systems. Everyone else had something that, that, the, that was working, but it was, it was all different things. He took one thing with the iPhone. He took one thing with the iPad and said, you know what? This can do everything. This one device can do everything that everyone else is trying to do. So he was thinking way down the road. He wasn't thinking in incremental steps. If you want to be a great leader, don't necessarily think in incremental steps. You got to look at the big picture. That's important to the process. So being consistent with the process is important, but also going outside of that and thinking about the big picture is huge. Who's that guy? Nick Saban. What is he famous for? Winning the ship. How many championships has he won? Three of the last four years. Four national championships over, overall. Why do you think, do you think this guy right here has a little confidence? Just a little bit, right? He's known to many as the best coach in America. Forbes magazine, not many football coaches in college are on the cover of Forbes magazine, right? He has that confidence to be the best. But what does confidence mean to you as far as, does it mean jumping up and down and telling everybody how great you are? Is that confidence? When you listen to Nick Saban, he's not, telling everybody how great he is. He doesn't have to pin roses on himself. What he's doing is following a process. He has that quiet confidence. So I would say to you, have that quiet confidence. Be confident in your ability, but it's not scoring a touchdown and doing a dance. It's not you know, putting the puck in the net and, and, you know, and raising the, your hands and, 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 and celebrating by yourself. It's, it's being a part of your, with your teammates, having that confidence that when we go into this match, we're not going to be beat tonight. You don't have to tell them. Go show them. Tell me, give me some examples of what confidence means to some people in here. Tell me, tell me what, what confidence means and, and maybe relate it to your sport. Don't give up. Not be, being down, we all, we all have been down, but not giving up is important. Who else? Go ahead. Okay. Who is the team? Okay, Ashley. <laughs> 
Don't be scared. <laughs> right. So y'all didn't you didn't feel like y'all had enough initially. Okay, good. Go ahead. Stand up. Tell you stand up. Stand up. Okay, true to yourself, being true. Go ahead, stand up. Trust in the work you put in Monday through Friday. Trust in the work you put in Monday through Friday. That's that confidence piece. I saw a hand over here. Go ahead, stand up. Uh, relying on your teammates. Relying on your teammates. That's the confidence you have within the team. Anyone else? Go ahead. Uh, not being afraid to take the last shot. Not being afraid to take the last shot. A lot of guys are hiding the corners of the gym on you when the, when the clock is counting down, won't they? They don't want that last shot. It's hot potato. <laughs> so Nick Saban has built a program on confidence and with a process. When Alabama took the field, I'm going to tell you a short story. Down in South Florida, the story was Alabama was standing at this place called the Fountain Blue. It's the most popular hotel in Miami. All the celebrities were there. I guess supermodels were there. Everybody was there. It was a big distraction. And the reporter asked Nick Saban, he said, hey, you guys are staying at the Fountain Blue. All these distractions. Notre Dame is staying way off in a secluded area. And Nick Saban calmly said, hey, I'm not worried about my guys. I believe in my guys. And reports came out that Alabama party hard on Wednesday and Thursday. And boy, they might be in trouble come game day. But what happened? <laughs> when, when Alabama walked on that field, as good as Monty Teo was, when he saw Eddie Lacy coming downhill, <laughs> his eyes got big. Because he felt like, hey, this guy is for real. This guy looked like a different player. Some people, Notre Dame fans, told me that coming out of the locker room, they could tell they were in trouble. They could really tell because the difference, the confidence that Alabama, the swagger that they had. So Alabama didn't say anything, but it's that quiet confidence. So I challenge all the athletes in here. When you come out, I don't care if it's Ashland, Grand Valley, Wayne State, come to win. Believe that you're going to win. That's a part of that leadership. Hey, anybody know this guy right here? We're going to play a clip. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the doping. This is not the first time it's happened to me. This stuff started back in 1998 when I from our perspective and from what's going on at the U.S. Postal and Discovery and, and, and all of those tours, we have nothing to hide. I have never doped. I can say it again. Yeah, I've said it for seven years. It doesn't help. But the fact of the matter is I haven't. He just told ESPN on the record and on camera that back in 95, when the team was struggling, that you announced to the team that you were going to begin doping and you were encouraging other teammates to do the same. What do you say to that account? You know, again, complete nonsense. My case, I mean, I came out of a, a life-threatening disease. I was on my deathbed. You think I'm going to come back into a sport and say, okay, okay, doctor, give me everything you got. I just want to go fast. No way. I would never do that. I just want to make sure your testimony is clear. Well, if it can be clear that I've never taken drugs, Incidents like that could never happen. Okay. How clear is that? Everybody wants to know what I'm on. What am I on? I'm on my bike, busting my ass six hours a day. <laughs> One word to sum this all up credibility. Uh oh. <laughs> now, when you look at this next trait for a leadership, is what is it? Integrity. Now, you just saw a clip of a guy that said 
I'm never doped. I don't even know why you're even asking me these questions. He was defiant, <laughs> wagging his finger at people, ending people's careers, suing people, saying he had never doped. What happened yesterday? He admitted what? Doping. So is this a guy that you want to mirror with great integrity? Not really, right? Does this change? Let me ask some of you. Does this change your opinion of Lance Armstrong? Now the seven-time Twitter fans that came out and said, hey, I really was lying all these years, and, 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 I, and I did dope. Does this change your opinion? Yes? No? No? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he came back from cancer, so, I mean, he can dope all he wants. He, you know, beat Dad. <laughs> cut, cut him some slack. I mean, if, if he had just came out and been like, yeah, I doped, it's like, okay, well, you know, you still bounced back from it. I mean, he still woke up and did all that stuff and still won seven times. But right. He cheated, so. Right. He but, cheated. <laughs> but he cheated. Okay. Anybody else? Give me another view. Does, has this changed your opinion? Go ahead. I mean, yeah, the whole thing's about integrity, and up until yesterday, he was probably someone that everyone thought of that just had great moral character. So many things dealt with people with cancer, so it's you can look at it from that perspective. Yeah, he cheated, but he's also helped millions of people around the world. So. Tough balance. Anyone else? Has it changed your opinion on Lance Armstrong? Yes, go ahead. One character flaw. Here's the thing. However you slice it, Everyone, can, everyone makes mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Everybody in this room has made mistakes. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. But the key to it all is, is what? When you make the mistakes, is not compounding it by doing what? Lying. Lying. That's the thing. If you get caught and you do something, just say, hey, you know what? I screwed up. How can I get better? How can we move forward and, and, and move on and learn from it? The one thing you never want to do when confronted is lie, because that's what compounded. And everyone has a right to their opinion. That's why I wanted different opinions about Lance. My feeling is he disappointed me, not necessarily with the, with the drugs. That was bad. But then you kept lying and kept lying. When people gave you opportunities to say, hey, you know what? I screwed up. I'm, you know, I shouldn't have done it. And this is why I did it. So let's talk about drug testing. That's very, very important in an athlete and in a student athlete. It's very important. I know Fair State has a relatively new drug testing policy. We're not going to get into anybody. Everybody's starting to move around a little bit. We're not going to get into anybody's personal stuff here. But I want to hear some thoughts on the policy. What do you think about it? Have you, have you read it? Have you paid attention to it? And how important is it to you as an athlete, whether it's performance enhancing drugs, whether it's weed, whatever it is, how important is this policy to you and have you paid attention to it? And we're going to get some answers because I'm going to be here until we get some. So we're going to get some answers. I want to hear, hear from you. And it's not an indictment. I just want to know, is the policy affected you in any way? Go ahead. Never mind, okay. <laughs> Come on, athletes, somebody. What do you think about the policy? You think it's fair? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep, you. I think it is fair. Honestly, I mean, you got to be able to trust your teammates, you know what I mean? You don't want to go out there, have somebody on your, like, on the same side as you. Drugs, like, 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 I know some athletes, not necessarily at fairs, but other schools that smoke 
during the game, like, not during the game, but before the game, like, play video games, right? Play video games, high, you know what I mean? And I mean, they win, but still, that's not right, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> So they're winning high. Go ahead, back here. Go ahead, in the corner. Stand up, I can't hear you. I said, I just feel like at the end of the day, like, marijuana not making you like, a better athlete, so whether you smoke it or not, it's really irrelevant. It's not like it's a steroid or nothing like that. Okay, that's an opinion. Go ahead, go, right here, go ahead. Listen up. That's a bad thing because although people, it might like uh, put people on the spot, I also think it makes people more aware of what they're doing and they think about it more before they make their decisions. What's not a bad, clarify yourself. I'm sorry. The drug test. Like the drug test is not a bad thing. Okay. I thought you were saying something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> somebody else, what do you think about the drug test and policy and, and drugs in general? Come on, athletes. Go ahead. I think it's more of a, like a discipline thing. So, I mean, you could say, you could argue that it's not making you any worse. Like, look at Michael Phelps. He was a dominant swimmer. And, like, smoke weed. But. Stand up. People can hear it. Yeah, so I said. <laughs> no, I said you could argue that it doesn't make you a worse athlete to do drugs. But I think it's a discipline thing to set an example. It's just to look good for people that are looking up to you or whatever. Just as a role model. This guy with a Jesus shirt on. You got to like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a discipline thing. Any, anyone else on drugs, in sports, drug testing policy here at Ferris, you think it's, go ahead. You heard that. Go ahead. And that's a great, give him a hand, that was good. He said it right there. You don't want to mess up what you built up. And Ferris has the same drug testing policy that the NCAA has. I worked at the NCAA, I know how stringent that drug testing policy is. Ferris has that same policy. And if you do drugs, it's simple. You will get caught. So don't do them. And don't do them just because, hey, I think I can beat the test. Don't do them because what he said, if you came to Ferris to be a student athlete, you came to prosper on and off the field. And if you mess up your career by getting involved with drugs, it's going to really have a damper on the rest of your life. Don't you think employers contact your former coaches and former uh, professors? They want to know what type of person he is. They'll contact the trainer. They'll contact anyone that was involved with you. So understand, you are what you embody every single day. And if you get away with it once, don't think you'll get away with it again. So the best thing to do is have that integrity and don't get involved with any drugs. It, it is a destruction to your career and some of the great athletes, you've seen them fall from grace, not because of other things, but because of drugs. And one thing in this world, all you have is your integrity. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone does some things, but drugs is something you should never get involved with as a student athlete, as a student period. You just don't need it. You, there's a lot of other things out there for you if you stay away from the drugs. 
service. Who's that guy? Dr. Martin Luther King. You guys are going to, to be off next Monday. Why? Dr. King holiday, right? Ask yourself, you're off. It's not a day off. It's a day on. Think about the service aspect of things that can really help shape you and can really help you move to that next level. If I know somebody that's a servant leader, that has servant leadership, it's very important. Someone read that quote for me. Go ahead. <clears throat> Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Exactly. Everybody can be great because everyone can serve. You don't have to have any special skills or do anything that's out of the ordinary or to have a PhD to, to, to serve. The one thing I'll challenge you guys with is to be servant leaders. There's actually a book out there called A Servant Leader, Servant Leadership. So if you want to, if you want to do something special, be able to, to, to do it outside of your sport. Don't be just known as the jack. Don't be just known as the athlete. Be known beyond that in the classroom and somebody that's going to get involved and give back. I'm here tonight not because I wanted to travel three hours in the snow and hang out in Big Rapids. I love the place, but that wasn't it. The reason why I'm here is you. I wanted to come and give back to you and share all the things that I've learned throughout my short life and short career. I've sat in these same seats that you're sitting in. So the service for me was to be here for you to try to help you get to that next level. Try to help you avoid any pitfalls that you might get into. So my challenge to you is when you leave and start now, you don't have to leave. When you start, start now. Start doing things, get involved outside, be help, help, help if you can. That's important. You want people to say, hey, that's not a great football player. That's not a good person. He or she is a great person. And, and part of that is, is serving. Some people, give me some examples. I know some people here have been doing it already. Give me some examples of how some of you have served here while you, your time here at Ferris. Uh, we went to an elementary school in Red Books as kids. Elementary Red Books? How? Oh. Can I just stand? Yeah, stand. <laughs> For Bob, while we go to uh, Clint, little kids come and we do clinics and camps all through. Clinics and camps. Stop. At the beginning of each semester, my sorority buys school supplies for one of the elementary school in town. That's great. Well, how have you served while you're here? Um, the football team had to help everyone move into the dorm at the beginning of the year. Move, football team help everyone move in. We're just helping the girls, we help everyone. Time to rush. Who else? Who else has served and helped out? Why are you here first? No one else has served? We'll get, we'll get involved. That, that's important. So let's kind of recap and think about the things that it takes. I want, I want, to, I want to hear what are, the, what are the five things that it takes to be successful and as far as leadership in, in sports and in life for that matter. Somebody stand up and give them to me. What are some of the, what are the five things that it takes to be successful from a leadership standpoint? Integrity is one. Service. Persistence. Confidence. Confidence. Service. Service. Creativity. Creativity. Those things will help you get 
to where you want to go. And as, as I close here, I want to challenge each and every one of you to practice these things every day in your life. Understand, it's a short window while you're on the college campus. If you're a student athlete, those are some of the greatest times of your life. Winning that championship here at Ferris for me was a great, one of the greatest times of my life. We just had a reunion this past year when we brought all the teammates back and we celebrated that championship. Having that ring was important. I know our hockey team has had that, has tasted that. I know other teams on campus has tasted that success. Well, you don't get there without doing these things. If these things go awry, you're not going to get there. So I'm challenging you, be a part of the buddy system. Challenge your friends to be these things on the screen. Challenge your friends to have that leadership, have that integrity, have that creativity, have that quiet confidence. Be a part of something special by doing these things in leadership. All of you have it in you. And one day when you walk away from this campus, you're going to come back and you're going to say, man, wow, that was a great experience and I got a lot out of it because of all of these things up there, one thing or another. So in closing, I want to wish all of you success. If any of you have any questions, of, of you know career questions or how to how to get there, you can feel free to ask me uh, afterwards. But thank you for your time.